Hey, mathematicians. So today we are working on this learning target. I can make equivalent fractions to add fractions together. Think about how when you are creating a, uh, let's say it's like a shelf or um, when you're cooking, you need to have the same sort of measurement in order to create the whole thing. So if I'm baking something, I want to use cups the whole time rather than using milliliters so that I have a consistent recipe. If I'm building something, I might choose to use one ruler, which uses inches, rather than using a meter stick. Same with fractions. You're going to get a problem that looks like this. And it asks, what is the area of this shape? The whole shape. There will be a box in the corner that says that one square, that one square is equal to one because it's one whole. So I know that one of these is equal to one. How much or what is the area of this whole shape? Well, I can see that the blue is one. So I'm going to write down one. Hmm. But the other ones aren't the whole shape. So I'm going to draw a line here. That makes me see that this shape is the same length as this square. And the width is the same as half of this square. So I notice that the yellow is equal to one half. One half. Hmm. Now I can also tell based on that that this red shape, if it were the whole thing, this would be one half because it's half of this whole shape. It's half of it. Now that all that I have left is this piece. And this piece, I can tell, is one fourth. Because if I were to break up my whole into, sorry, my whole into four pieces, or fourths, that would be one fourth. Hmm. But I can't add one plus one half plus one half plus one fourth. That's too messy for me. So I need to change them all so that they match the smallest unit, the one with the largest denominator. Okay. So I know that a whole is equal to one, two, three, four fourths. So I can say four fourths. I know that a half of this whole is equal to two fourths. If I cut it in half, that that is equal to two fourths. I also know that I have that since this half is equal to two fourths, this half is also equal to two fourths. And that this one is one fourth. Now I did that so that I could add all my fourths together. So I have four fourths plus two fourths plus two fourths plus one fourth. Now we haven't worked on adding fractions much. When we add, we're keeping the denominator the same because it's the same size whole and we're seeing how many pieces of the whole we have. So my denominator stays the same. Now I add all of my 
numerator, all of my pieces of my whole. 4 plus 2, 6 plus 2, 8, 9, 9 fourths. Ooh, is that a mixed number or a improper fraction? I'm going to show you on the number line. If I have my number line, I can tell I'm going to have more than one hole. So my one hole is here, one. I have another hole, two. And I have three holes, three. I don't know if I'm going to have that many. I'm going to break up each hole into fourths because I decided my common denominator was four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, with the blue, I had four fourths. One, two, three, four. Four fourths. Then I had two fourths with the yellow. One, two, plus two fourths. I had another two fourths with this part of the red. One, two, two fourths. And then finally, I had one more fourth on this red. One fourth. That means I have a total of two and one fourth. Which means my answer to this problem, what is the area of the shape, is two. I could almost see that here. Two and one fourth. Your problem is going to be a little more complicated. You may divide up however you choose. Make sure you use equivalent fractions to add them all together and show me your thinking. Can't wait to see.